You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV <laughs> Angela Yee, Charlamagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest, an OG. In the a, building a triple OG. I guarantee this man has had sex with your mama. Probably <laughs> your grandma. It. Probably both together. Harlem Zone. <laughs> Keith Sweat. Hey, what sweat. up? What up? What up? What up? How y'all doing? That's offensive because I know women my age that Keith Sweat has had sex with also. I mean, all right, come on, baby. Okay, I don't want I'm nothing over but money. <laughs> <laughs> you say you don't want nothing over but money. <laughs> that's that's true, though. You still get a lot of young girls coming at you, Keith. All the time, baby. He said all the time. You still knocking them down? I mean, you know, son, son, just is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't say just ain't right. Yeah. You know, you know, so everything is good. No, everything is good. Now, you started off as a stockbroker. Right. Explain that a little bit. How did you get into the stockbroker business and then go to music? Well, you know, basically, you know, we all got to pay them bills. So, I mean, it was something that I enjoyed, something that I liked. But, you know, my true, true first love was uh, music. So, mm -hmm. you know, once I got the opportunity to do the music thing, I jumped straight on into it. Man. Was Strictly Business about your life? Because I, I just remember it now. When I'm thinking about What's like that, been the movie? Yeah, with Tommy Davis. He was a stockbroker, oh, remember? And I yeah. was like, damn, it was the same time with yeah. Heath Sweat. Yeah, I mean, that was part of my life. You know, I was in there doing, you know, uh, doing that whole commodity thing. I, 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 it was uh, metals. I was in metals, mm -hmm. copper, silver, uh, you know, gold. So, you know, I was doing the whole commodities thing, and, you know, and I was trying to do that. And, you know, and once I would get out of that, you know, which those hours was crazy at the time mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm saying the stock exchange was going crazy. Right. And after that, I would get out of there and go into the studio and try to, you know, make these hit records. Now, yeah. was you singing on the floor at the New York Stock Exchange? Oh, hell yeah. That <laughs> 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 was to the point where they was at, man, I was the dude shut up. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I wasn't paying them no mind, man. It was like, yo, man, yo, just take this and. Let's do what we do and let me do what I do. When did the good. big break happen that you knew you could quit the stock market? Oh, man. This is what it was crazy because I went to the studio and I cut Don't Stop Your Love with this kid, Vent, uh, Vincent Davis. Don't Stop Your Love. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and which everybody don't don't know, that was the record that got me the deal. You know, okay. Don't Stop Your Love. I wrote that uh, with Fred McFarlane, who wrote uh, Jocelyn Brown, Somebody Else's Guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, so. Once I did that record, you know, I mean, you know, I met my man Vincent Davis, who hooked me up with, uh, say, dude, we want to do a single deal on you. And once they heard, you know, that I, I had more hits than a single, then they said they wanted to do an album deal. So when I dropped, you know, we went in the studio, and before I knew it, I had a album, went with Teddy Riley, called Teddy, like, yo, man, I got this album deal. You know, let's do this album together. And, you know, we in the, going in the studio, knocking it out, and uh, it's history now. You was one of the first innovators of what they call the New Jack swing sound. Yeah, yeah, you know, mix that hip hop with that R&B, and that was it, mm -hmm. that's it. Was that the plan back in the day? That, that was the plan back in the day, because, you know, I, I was grew up listening to the old Jays, Laverde, and all of them, mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it, baby face, and, you know, I, I wanted, a, you know, being from Harlem, I wanted a little something more edgier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why I said, man, if we mix these hip hop beats with that R&B, it's going to be a little more edgy, and it's going to be a little more street. And, uh, you know, we did it and it won. I'm sure the influence of the, of the street was huge back then because Harlem was, at that time, was all about hustling and, 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 and now, Keith, selling drugs. Keith and, and is and a street dog. Like, I was he, about he, to say he, that. He, he got that whole R&B persona. We kicked it with Keith. Yes. I just wanna, my <laughs> whole perception of who Keith Sweat was before that was completely different. Yeah, I grew up around Guy Fisher and uh, mm -hmm. all them brothers, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And... Uh, you know, those were brothers who was talking about they, you know, I mean, I was in actually Guy Fisher who who ran the Apollo at one point, you know, who's in jail right now, but you know, I mean and all them that whole crew, you know, when I was hearing them talk about cutting people's legs off and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and doing certain things to other people, I was like, All right, man, I need to get up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. So that whole that whole you know, I'm from that whole that whole era, you know what I'm saying, where, you know, where they it was really going down back then, you know. But it it was cool. It was cool. That came in handy later on in the music industry when people probably try to jerk you for money. It, and stuff it, like it that. came in handy because, you know, it came in handy because, you know, I knew who to mess with and people knew I, and, and there was people that knew not to mess with me for certain reason because of my associations and because of the people that you know. It's like back in the like now, you know, people know who to met, know who to mess with now, know who not to mess with. How now. how was your first contract? My first contract was like everybody else's whack. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, I I, I quickly learned 
you know, after my first deal to go ahead and take on my own thing. I was, I think I was one of the first people to have my own label because I went and got my own label, put silk on the label, cut close on the label. Mm-hmm. And, and I'd never been in the red. I was, you know, first, you know, my first album did five million, you know, second album did three or four, but I was, fortunately for me, unlike most artists, I had written all my stuff mm-hmm. and produced all my stuff, me and Teddy. So all that publishing was mine, you know, I mean, all, all the producer money was mine. So the second album, you know, then I built a studio in my house. I was the first one to build an SSL board mm-hmm. in my house because I was like, yo, I'm not going in to- In Harlem? S- no, I, I built it in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So because after the first album, I built an SSL board and went to Atlanta and built the, you know, before everybody started moving to Atlanta. Why'd you get out of Harlem? Well, you know, I got out of Harlem because when I went, I was touring. Once I did my tour and I started touring the country, I'm like, yo, man, I can make the same kind of money, have a just as big a house or bigger house. Cost of living is low. And the cost of living. So what I did, I cut my cost of living real low. And that's why I was able to outlast a lot of people because, you know what I'm saying, I was the first one to look at, you know, you know run my own business. And because of the, my background, I knew what to do and how to do it. And that's ladies' good. asses is fatter in Atlanta, too, now. Let's be clear. I don't know about back then. You crazy. I mean, you know, I'm a New Yorker. Uh, <laughs> and I remember when LA- I'm a New Yorker, hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, honestly, I'm the uh, everybody running to a ATL, but I'm still, you know, New York. And I remember Very when sure. LA Reid was up here. He said the music business was really booming in Atlanta. Yeah, and that's around. the only reason I moved to Atlanta because, like I said, the cost of living was low, and you could get more for your money. But you know, I'm straight New York for real, for real. And you wrote a lot of hits people don't know about, like hit. Hit, hit records. Hit records, you know, for real. That when, you, when he tells you and you hear him, you be like, Damn, you wrote oh, that, okay. Like, you know, Just Got Paid with Teddy, you know, I wrote that. Uh, Let's Chill with Teddy, I wrote that. Uh, Freak Me, Freak Me, I wrote that for Silk. The whole Silk album I wrote, you know, the whole Silk first album That was a classic album. Yeah, uh, I wrote my whole first album with Teddy. Uh, mm-hmm. Wrote half of the LSG album. Mm-hmm. Uh Wrote for Ron Osley, Immature. Mm-hmm. Uh, shoot, I just wrote for everybody. OJ's. Who? OJ? OJ's. Was it hard to give those records away? Let's chill. Yeah, because that was a, that, you knew that That's was a, a when you big that record. Well, well, let's chill. What happened with let's chill is, you know, I mean, you know, that's when my man Gene Griffin was here. God rest his soul. And that's when my man Gene Griffin was here. And, you know, we I actually was supposed to do let's chill in the New Jack's. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, city uh, movie. Mm-hmm. And what happened is, uh, you know, I was in the studio, we cut Let's Chill, and then all of a sudden, you know, something happened with, you know, uh, God was going to do the song. Mm-hmm. You know, the, or what happened is I didn't, in the the song was, it just was not my song anymore after me and Ted wrote it. All right, make a long story short. So I had one day to do another song. Mm-hmm. And I ran in the studio and wrote, there you go telling me no again in about two hours. Mm-hmm. And that's how that song ended up being in the movie because that song don't have nothing to do about no wedding scene. It's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tell, there you go telling me no again. But Let's Chill was the song I was supposed to initially sing. So. Mm-hmm. What's your relationship with Teddy? Oh, that's my man. You know what I'm saying? We grew up doing a whole lot of, uh, the the whole low band thing in Harlem. We used to do the Red Rooster, uh, Mark IV, all them joints. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, Teddy was, in one group, I was in another group, and uh, we used to cross paths and do uh, competitions together. And I knew he was phenomenal as a keyboard player. So mm-hmm. when when I got my deal, I ran right to him and like, "Yo, dude, we need to come and do this." So he wasn't even on yet, really. No, nah, he wasn't on yet. Yeah. Not not really. You know, he was say he was doing what I was doing. You know, what I'm saying trying to get on. You know, what I'm saying. But we knew that first album was gonna be the the one that put us both on for real. Now you made love songs. You made party songs. What do you think about R&B now? I was. The other day, I'm, listen, I'm driving in listening to radio, and I'm listening to some of the classic R&B. I'm like, the songs don't have that feeling well, no I, more. It's I, no more, I want to make love no, to my And ain't no foreplay in the nah. music. No <laughs> foreplay. Ain't nothing make you want to take the condom off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, definitely not. Nah, 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 nah. Sometimes, you know, but nah, nah. They, I mean, it, it's not what it used to be. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not saying nothing. You know, you know, you listen to it, be like, man, what is it, you know, why? You know, that's the question you ask, why? But why is that now? I mean, people are still making love. They're still. I mean, <laughs> well, the point of the matter is, you know, I mean, I, I, it might be the production, it might be who's producing, it might be, you know, what I'm saying, they haven't experienced anything. So it, it, it could be a number of reasons. When I, when I grew up, you know, what I'm saying, I knew what it was to romance a woman, mm. you know. So you know, I know, you know, the women back in them days. <laughs> 
Now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the women back in them days, you know, they wanted to be romance. Now, you saying they was harder to f back then, Keith? Oh, yeah, they wanted to be romance back in them yeah. days. Now, and guys are more chivalrous as yeah, well. Yeah, now, now, they now, the now they, women, you know, no no point. They they just like men, you know, what you got, what you gonna give me to get some of this? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what it is, what you got, you know, you can get some. But you know men also have short attention spans now, I feel like. Some. Because yeah. I feel like social media has changed a lot of that. Oh, so most much definitely. access to everything. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. If it's you just ain't, too easy. I bet your Facebook popping, Keith. Yeah, you know, it's good. <laughs> 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 you, you look at girls that you smashed before, and then you look at them now and be like, damn, did I really smash her? A few. Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> A few. I mean, it's, it's real. You know, yeah. sometimes, you know, you got to keep your game up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I mean, sometimes you be like, damn, I know life has been hard, but baby, come on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do that. You well, really gosh. do that. And then sometimes you be got girl, you, you you kept yourself up real well, you know. So, I mean, it's just like a a, a, a sister that might be dating a, a, a brother and be like, man, I remember back in the day and say, man, what happened to you? You know, you got to keep your, you got to just keep it up right. You got to make it right. A lot of people, money ran out, man. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen to some people if you don't spend it right. <laughs> now, what about artists today? Nobody ever asked you like, hey, it'd be great if you could write some songs for... I would think because you wrote so many huge hit songs that you would kind of be a go-to person to get it, you know. Well, the songs, I mean, you know, uh, I, I get asked to do a lot of, uh, you know, remakes like I did the Chris Brown remake, Nobody, uh, uh, with Chris. Uh, you know, I did, a, you know, the Supreme record with Ross. So, you know, I, I basically, people come and ask me to just get on their record nowadays, you know, in terms of, they ask me to write, but sometimes people don't think I want. I'm interested in doing that. Yeah. You know, I have they, 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 they have this thing, man. Sweat ain't gonna be interested in doing that, or sweat ain't gonna be interested in getting on my record. Which you know, and which I, I I'll get on somebody's record, won't even charge them. You know what I mean? That's Whatever like, reputation oh, come from, though. <laughs> well, you know, because they feel like you know, because I'm an OG. For some reason, they had they had the feeling like, yo, I'm gonna have to pay them a lot of money to get on the record, or you know, whatever. You know, you know. Sometimes I'd be like, man, I come in there and just do it on the strength. Because it ain't know? like you need the money. Yeah, yeah. But see, that's I the mean, thing. That ain't a bad reputation to have when people know you still out here getting bread. You know, still not, making money. Yeah, it ain't a bad reputation to have. It's a, it's a, it's a good reputation to have. So, but you know, like I said, I don't mind getting on somebody you know, joint, because, you know what I'm saying, that's what I love to do. Yeah. I love doing music, I love, you know, a lot, I like, you know, a lot of artists that's out here, you know what I'm saying, you know, I love that new trap, trap soul that, mm -hmm. that people doing right now, you know what I'm saying, I stay up on them, all that. So people. you like Bryson Tiller? Oh, that's my, yo, he, he dope. Mm -hmm. I think he dope, you know what I'm saying? You he know? don't show his face enough, though. Yeah, he, he seemed like he a little shy, yeah, <laughs> but, but, he, but he dope, you know what I'm saying, and that might be good. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want everybody to be acting the fool out here. You know what I'm saying? You know, like he seemed like he's staying, his, you know, to stay in his lane. He's staying in his lane, do what he got to do and stay in his lane. He's right? an artist. But he wants yeah. to do his music and he's not interested in just being in the spotlight. Right. But at least right. on stage back in the day, y'all used to like take your shirts off, do pelvic thrusts at the girls, take the tongue I, I out, used bring to, them on stage. I, I, I used to hump the stage, but I'm too old to be, <laughs> I'm too old to be humping the stage now. You know what I'm saying? We, I still see. <laughs> I still see some of my groups that I put out, they like to still hump the stage. I'll be like, man, you too old to be humping the stage, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? You too old to be doing that, man. Why don't you just keep your shirt on and, you know, you grown and sexy now, man. Just keep it keep it grown and sexy. Let them young boys do all the humping and the grinding yeah. on the stage. You know what I'm saying? Can you see me like, humming, <laughs> laying on the floor humping the stage? <laughs> like, <laughs> I might not be able to get my ass up. <laughs> like, hold up. Yo, help me up. <laughs> but you're still in good shape. Yeah, I'm in good shape. I, I can hump the stage and get you up. Got the, you got the stage. <laughs> if you can hump a young girl, you can hump the stage. I can hump the stage and get up. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you, uh, Bobby Brown put out his autobiography, Being Bobby Brown. Mm -hmm. And he told a lot of things in that book. Did you read any of it or read about it? I, I heard some of the things I didn't mean. I, 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 I seen, you know. Man, it's amazing. Things. He talked about sleeping with Janet Jackson. He talks about, of course, his relationship with Whitney. He talks about Madonna. Uh, smashing talks, Madonna yeah, in the smashing bathroom. Madonna. He gives a lot of explicit details. Can I do, you that. asking me, could I do that? That's what she's asking. Yes. Basically. Do radio. Well, well, yeah. Basically. 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 Well, basically, basically ask you. you asked me, could I... Could I really? Well, first both. I was gonna ask you. People were very critical of him, though, putting certain things out there like that. Do you think it was tacky? And then, I, then I was gonna say, would you ever do? Well, since Bob is my boy, I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm, a, I'm gonna say it. I couldn't do it. 
I couldn't, honestly. I mean, certain things, you know, to each his own. I always say that, to mm-hmm. each his own. And uh, uh, that's my man, and I, I'm never going to, you know, I don't care what, you know, put him out the dry. You know what I'm saying? Because that's my man. Right. Bottom line. So when it's like if you my man and my boy, I don't care what nobody's saying about you. I'm not going to put you out the dry right. like that. So on that note, I'm going to say I wouldn't, I couldn't do that. I couldn't put certain things or I wouldn't put certain things out about certain people, so about certain women. I don't care what nobody paid me or because that's just the person I am. You know what I mean? I think when you do things behind closed doors, it should be kept behind closed doors, especially right especially when it comes to when a woman feels like she's basically sharing herself with you in the thing that you're doing or intimately and privately for y'all too, only y'all too. You know what I'm saying? So I think... I just want you to know that line you just said going to get you so much... Your Facebook, in, your Facebook, <laughs> inbox, your Facebook inbox. Oh, he so does crazy. mean it. He's <laughs> quite aware. He's aware. You know, so I think certain things should be kept behind closed doors. Now... You know, for me, that's how I feel. But everybody is not like me. So, I mean, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What's your craziest tour story? Because, I mean, you've knocked down a lot of them. <laughs> I, I had a few of them. I remember one time, like, I, I was humping the stage back in the day when I was younger. <laughs> 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 humping the stage back in the day, and, and my and my crew set me up. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they knew I would hump the stage and turn around and and, and go hump up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when I was humping, I turned around and there was a girl standing over me with nothing on. Mm. Uh, on top of me, you know, that she had her legs open. And when I looked up, I crawled from under because <laughs> my crew had set me up because they knew at the time. But I didn't see the girl standing on top of me for the time when I was turn, would turn back around. I looked up and I said, oh, shit. And then you know what I'm saying. I rolled from under that. That was one of the crazy thing. And then it's, that's somebody mama today. I just want y'all yeah, to know that. Mama. Definitely, Keep somebody, that in mind. definitely. And then you know this girl threw this big bra on my stage, and I threw it back at her. I said, "Yo, this too big for me, baby." <laughs> 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 threw it right back at her. Now you said back in the day women were harder to have sex with. Is that where like the begging style came from in your music? Because that's what people always used to say. You sound like you're begging in your records. Yeah, you know, I, yeah they used to talk that. About me begging, but I'm right. rich begging now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm glad I started begging. A lot of people started begging when I, you know, didn't beg when I was begging. But you know, I'm sorry, they should have been begging. I'm gonna give them something, you know. <laughs> but anyway, what happened is, you know, and, and fellas used to always say to me, "Yo, man, thank you for last night." I used uh-huh. to say, what the hell you talking about? Thank you for last night. I, what you mean? I said, man, I put your joint on and it was and and, and it worked. And I, I thought they, you know, you know how you. People just want to tell you things, right, right, right. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, do my joint really work like that? So I went overseas, for real, for real. And I was trying to hit this girl, and she wouldn't give me nothing, nothing. She going to be like, baby, come on, I need you, I need you tonight. I'm leaving, going back to America tomorrow. No, no, this was in London. No, 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 no. Me no, again. no, 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 no. <laughs> I started singing that nobody. <laughs> <laughs> You say yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you started singing. I started. Right. Hold up, hey, hey. Hold on. Did you ask her to let me put the tip in first, or did you ask to eat it first? You just went now, right to singing. No, no, I started singing. I ain't want to eat it. I ain't want to just put the tip in. I want the whole thing if I was gonna get it. No tip. I was leaving the next day. Yeah, what yeah, what yeah. I'm gonna get? A, a tip? That wasn't gonna do nothing for me, man. Yeah, how I want. Did you sing to? Yeah. How often huh? did that? How, how many tips did you sing to? A lot. Oh man, back in the day, that once I found out it really worked. <laughs> Hold on, so you didn't know your own song man, was really working? Man, I didn't know that. <laughs> Keith, they work now. They work now, but, you know, back in the day, I was just trying to get money. I didn't even mm-hmm. care about, you know what I'm mean? saying? I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about that like that. But when I realized it worked and I knew I ain't have to, like, really do nothing yeah, but play the play nothing. I was yo know, and play. I didn't have to play Babyface. I didn't have to play Johnny. I didn't have to play none of them. I don't put my own joint on, or either just sing one line. Shoot, I, was, I, I went to work, baby. It didn't, it, didn't feel, it, it didn't feel weird having sex to your own music. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. You know why? Cause I ain't feel like there, there was just me. It was nobody in the room but me and her, yeah, and yeah, maybe yeah. and maybe my voice. I didn't have to say a word. Can you imagine? You don't have to say nothing. And the song doing all the talking for you. You just looking at her. And I, at the time, 
at the time, you know, you know, I, I, you know, I like to do it. Yeah, baby. Yeah. You know, on the songs, you know, yeah, baby. On the, you know, on the songs, you know, I ain't had to say a word. Now, is it hard for you, though, because you're an R&B singer, so you make these records that are so big sexually. Girls expect for you to be the best they ever had. You gotta. You you can never have a bad. You performance. can't strike out. Women never. think they gotta just lay there. He's Why I can't strike out? Do everything. Now, I'll be like, I was tired, girl. I was in the, <laughs> was in the studio last night. I'll catch you on the day. I'll catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it's so, nah, fellas, come on. Sometimes we just had those moments. Right. Come on, like, I ain't gonna lie. You know, we not gonna talk about the blind girl and like when, when we was in Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I keep thinking about that situation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where, you, know, you gotta tell them now. You, you gotta get about the blind girl. Hold on, hold on, hold on, man. That, I got hold you got to tell you when we was in the hold up let me tell you, you know everybody watching this man when we was in Atlanta that's your boy wax wax, wax. Yeah, yeah yeah wax was talking about the best <laughs> the best sex he ever had was with a blind girl right? yeah cuz he said because all the senses <laughs> wax is crazy go go to the one spot and i was like man you out your mind <laughs> And he said, for real, for real, it just go to the one spot. And I'm like, man, are you crazy? He said, man, you got to try it. I said, no, I'm not going to try it. You ain't tried yet? No, nah, no, nah, I let I can't take his word for it. I take his word. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, LSG, they started the trend of artists coming together to form super groups. Right, right. How'd you, how'd, how'd you feel about that? Well, you know, I mean, everybody didn't think it was going to work. I'm the one to put the LSG project together. Mm -hmm. uh, I was cursed out by the record company, honestly, when I thought about doing LSG. Uh, Why? Because, you know, I had just came off the Nobody album, you know what I'm saying, that sold four million, so the label just wanted me to go ahead and do another Key Sweat record, and you know, me and Jay LaBert was boys, and you know, me and Johnny was boys, and actually R. Kelly was supposed to be in, in, in you know, do the LSG project as well. Really? Then, yeah, right. Like LSGK or something? Or? It was supposed to be called something like that, LSGK, something like that. And it was just supposed to be four, you know, R&B artists getting together. Power, you know, we was just going, you know, it was a power move, you know. And uh, at the last minute, he chose not to do it. You know, his manager, you know, told him he didn't need to do it or whatever. So he pulled out. And so it left it with uh, a jail, myself, and Johnny. And I told him it would still work because, you know, at the time, you know, my, my that album I had did to Nobody Twisted album did four million. Mm -hmm. I said, we can just go ahead and, and you know, and capitalize off the success of, off that album. So the label got mad at me because they wanted me to go and, and just do another Key Sweat album. But I was thinking, I'm on some business tip now, and I'm saying, yo, if I do LSG, that's a check. Then I can come back and do another Key Sweat album. That's another check. So I'm thinking like that. And then I said, you know, most of the time when, you know, you have, like, artists of our level that get together and go out and uh, put an album together is more on some uh, charitable, you know, type of thing. So I said, man, we need to just do it, and I think it'll work. So, you know, the label cursed me out. They said, F Johnny, you know what I'm saying? The head of the label said, F Johnny. and uh, F Johnny what? Because they didn't feel like... <clears throat> he was big enough at the time. He was big enough at the time, which I knew it would work, and, you know, they, they might have had it. They just had their issues with Johnny, you know, for whatever reason, and I just... Felt like, you know, that's my man. Why are you cursing at me and cursing at him? And they went off on me on the phone, and I cursed the head of the label out too, you know what I'm saying? So let make a long story short, it happened, and then it won, and then, you know what I'm saying, and they tried to take the credit for mm -hmm. it, but I'm the one that put that whole project together. You glad you did it, though, especially being Almost definitely, passed. most definitely, because, you know, Gerald had never gone platinum. That was his first platinum album wow. ever. Wow. So, you know, he used to always thank me because he used to say, man, my brother, you know, without you, he had never got MTV because at the time MTV was that thing. You know what I'm saying? You Once you hit MTV and got on MTV, you was that man mm -hmm. back then. You know what I'm saying? So he had never got on MTV and he thanked me for that and going platinum because that was his platinum, first platinum album ever. Damn, I never thought about that. That's kind of like when players get together now to get a ring. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we thought about it like that. That's the same. <laughs> you a bad boy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> now, D Johnny Kemp, you wrote "Just Got Paid," right? Yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah. That's a great Friday song. That's a song. big yeah. record, bro. Well, you, you know, I mean, that it. album, that record, me and Ted did that record. It was actually supposed to go on my first album, mm -hmm. but it was too late for my first album. So what happened is, you know, I ran into Johnny Kemp on a hundred thirty-seven. God rest his soul, because you know he's not here anymore. Passed away, right? Passed away. You know what I'm saying? Actually, he got killed in the. 
Tom joined the boat cruise. Boat. Uh, no, he was. He didn't make the cruise. He 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 went to Montego Bay and he he got uh, killed before he even got was supposed. To, he was supposed to get on the boat and never even made it to the boat. But uh, God rest his soul, you know. But I ran under him on 138th and uh, I, I was walking 133rd and 7th Avenue. I said, dude, you know, I got the song for you. And uh, I was getting ready to go on tour, and I said, man, you need to go and cut it. And, you know, so what happened, long story short, you know, I was on tour. Heard he cut the record, and the record, I came home, we watched looking at Billboard, and I said, oh, I got another number one record. And come to find out, I ain't never get credit for the record. No! Ooh. I didn't get credit for the record, because at the time, Gene Griffin, you know, had said, if you tell Keith, say anything about Keith Sweat, had anything to do with the song, you won't get the song. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. uh. Let, long story short, you know what I'm saying. Uh, they put the song out and uh, and and uh, and uh, it hit. And but I, I, you know, Teddy, you know, Teddy, Teddy made it right for me. And uh, and uh, basically now I get credit for the record now. You know? So so you get your money off the record. Basically. Yeah, I get you know because you know. Ted, you know, I, I mean, feel like you're leaving like, a lot out. I feel like you went real Harlem on him. I feel like he, I feel like a blade might have been pulled out. But you know, he, he you know what I'm saying. I mean, rest his soul. You know, he's he's not he's not here no more. So you know, I just leave it like that. But you know, I, right now I get the you know I get what I'm supposed to get from the record right now. Mm -hmm. All right. You but, still make a lot of money on the road too. Yeah, I make good money. You know, I'm not mad at myself. You know, I tour a lot. I mean, I think you told I told us the number. I'm I not think, gonna say it, but you you was drunk. Oh my gosh! And you told us the number. I was drunk. You was drunk and you told us the number. Keep saying, keep saying, I do it when I want to, not because I got to. <laughs> you know, I was drunk too. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was drunk too. Y'all remember? I was, I left. I didn't leave to the everybody else. Y'all was gone when I, I was left. Like, you know, like, I left with you. End. I waited. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Drunk, I remember. was. I was drinking. You know. Yeah. Damn. I was drinking a lot too. <laughs> I was talking. Man, drink. he was talking so much. <laughs> I'm glad y'all didn't have me film. I thought y'all. <laughs> I thought y'all was filming. Man, that's not what you said. In play it. Play it back. <laughs> I'm like, yo, yeah, nah, I'm, you know, I have to watch y'all sometimes. But you, have a, you have a lot of streams of income because touring, then, of course, you have your annual event that you do, and you have the nationally syndicated show. Oh, yeah, oh, Sweat yeah. Sweat Hotel. The sweat, baby. Yeah, how'd you get in the radio? What got you in the radio? You know Doc Winners, man. You know Doc Winners. <laughs> <laughs> Doc Winners. Never heard of him. <laughs> Doc Winners. Put me Who's Doc Winners? Y'all, okay. You know who Doc Winners is. <laughs> you know who Doc Winners is. <laughs> OG <laughs> Doc Winners. <laughs> Triple OG Doc yeah, Winners. Yeah, yeah, you know what happened is, you know, Doc called me up. He said, man, you you know, I was, you know, you ever thought about doing radio? I said, man, I think about it all the time, how, how those checks looking. He said, man, they look good. You can make a lot of money. I said, well, I need to be doing radio. So basically, I started in eight markets, you know, as a trial run. Started you know. in eight. That's crazy. Started in eight markets, yeah, well, as a trial run. That's and, great. And it, it just started picking up from now. Now, now I'm in about 60. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, at night, number one syndicated nighttime Here radio show, baby. You know what I'm saying? Talk that is. You know what I'm saying? Premier. So, from like Claire Channel, you know what I'm saying? Our heart. Our heart. I'm sorry, boy. Our heart. I'm sorry, man. Y'all correct me when I'm wrong. Y'all know how y'all like to correct people when they're wrong. I feel like so Doc correct. living vicariously through you because Doc used to do a quiet storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever heard it? Yeah, it was in, uh, wasn't it in St. Louis. You thought it was good? Doc, yeah, it was you great. It was fantastic. It was, it was, fantastic. It was, fantastic. It was, it was the <laughs> most amazing <laughs> nighttime show I ever heard yeah. in my life. Yes, it was amazing. Doc, I know you're listening and looking. <laughs> Wherever you at, I know you listening to this. <laughs> now, I saw you post that you hope the next big trend in music is talent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause you know, there's not a whole lot of talent, man. I mean, you know, I mean, I see everybody like to do this with the mic nowadays. Right. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like <laughs> let the crowd sing. Let the crowd yeah. sing. And if you dancing too hard, ladies and gentlemen, if somebody dancing too hard on the stage and not running out of breath, they lip syncing. <laughs> so, so you know, and so back in the day, we couldn't do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? You better not do that if you was on stage with the old days or Lavert or somebody else or baby face or anybody mm -hmm. like that, you you better have been lip singing. So to me it's like, you know, people have to step their talent game up. Uh, it's, people have so, got so accustomed to just letting the track play and you playing singing over the track that it, 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 it's sad because that's what people are paying for. People, anybody, any artist or anybody out there can can pretty much do a lot of things that or some of the things that some of the artists out there are doing nowadays. So 
I hope the next trend is the talent stepping up in terms of really going back to the drawing board and mm-hmm. uh, doing what it is to put that work in like they're supposed to put it in and go out there because that's why you don't have legends anymore. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't see if y'all could tell me what who's going to be the next legend, you don't you know, there's not another Luther Vandross mm-hmm. Vandross or or Lionel Richie or people mm-hmm. that I mean if somebody what about can just, Beyonce, you think she's legendary? She is now. Yeah, she's definitely legendary. Mm-hmm. You know, come on, I ain't gonna say nothing about Beyonce when There's you know B-I Jay is out there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> like y'all are crazy. Don't what give you mean me just R and B guys. Yeah, R and B guys. You know, like you like. It's one that got a lot nah, of but be, yeah, Beyonce. Miguel. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Keep playing. <laughs> I know I'm not nothing's wrong with Miguel. I mean, I just said I'm talking about he has potential. He has the potential to be a legend. I'm just saying someone who has the potential to be legendary with if they come out and, you know, 10 years from now, they still going to be relevant. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't see that. No I mean, Prince, no Michael Jackson. Nah, I don't no. see that. Do y'all see that? I, the only reason I if say you that, can tell me. No, nah, nah, I don't not see Prince I, Michael Jackson. Yeah, not that. Nah, not that level. I mean, that's just. I mean, but it, I, okay, well, tell me. I mean, you know, I, mean. I think it's the content though. Like, I think the reason I like Miguel is because he makes things that ten years from now I know I can still throw Timeless, a door on. Timeless music. You know music. what I'm saying? Music, yeah. I'm not okay. gonna be singing these hoes ain't loyal ten years from now. Because why would I expect will. a hoe to be loyal ever? Will. <laughs> <laughs> like I know hoes ain't low. I don't need to hear that record ten years. From well, now. you know, I I I get your point when you say Miguel. You know, because of the content, uh, uh, or, or the music. I mean, I, but I, I mean, to a, a degree of a Prince or a uh, Michael Jackson. When I say or, or or even, you know, if you just go straight real R and B or Luther, you know, I I I just don't see it. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel it. I don't see it. I don't see it weird. You know, after you finish doing what you're doing, you can say. You know, because most of these artists now that, you know, can go to Vegas mm-hmm. and, you know, have a career in Vegas. Right. Because uh, 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 if Luther was still living, he could go to Vegas. Yeah. And that joint would be packed out mm-hmm. every yeah. every night. So I'm talking about on the scale of that type of right. caliber. You know, Mike could go to Vegas. And, you know what I'm saying? Any, any of those acts that I'm talking about could possibly go to Vegas and have, you know, stay there forever. Right. I don't see it. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of very for the moment guys out here. Right, right. There now you, you got go. a new you album coming new, out on you think, your birthday. Oh. You got a new album coming out on your birthday. Yeah, don't ask July me how 22nd. old I am or none of that. <laughs> man, we got Wikipedia right here. Don't know, man. Come on. Pull up his net worth. Let me close that shit up, man. Come on, man. Celebrity net worth. I was gonna ask. No, I'll do that now. Man, I don't want to do that shit, man. Come on, they don't know all that, man. Come on, baby. Tell us about the new album. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I knew y'all was gonna start some. Sooner or later, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tell yeah, put some respect on your name. I started to say that, but I, I changed my mind. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on, now. Yeah. To impress July 22nd. What you say? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's you go to that. Why are you flustered now? Yeah, follow me. Don't worry about it. Because y'all, 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 y'all don't see. See, this is what y'all do. You know what I'm saying? Woo! Y'all don't need no ratings on me, God damn it. <laughs> well, I'll just keep this to myself. Keep some respect on my name. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, you know, let me make me some T-shirts that say that. <laughs> No, oh, no, this can't be right. See, they don't know what they talking about. You know, that's why. That's why. That, this uh, definitely isn't. You right. really don't age though, because nah. since we've seen you from day you one, you know that ain't gonna be right. Grown. That ain't gonna be right. <laughs> that ain't gonna be right. None it's of that. Not, there's no way because I already know his salary alone is way. See, see, see. They, they, they got me down there for what for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, that that's what they that's why I laugh, you know what I'm saying? You don't yeah, you right. can't relate none of that. So, he got that on in here right now. Thank you. I mean, you know, in my syndicated show I make more than that. <laughs> don't tell him that. You make more royalties. Don't talk that into them. <laughs> and you still tall. I know you better than that. Come on, man. But anyway, but anyway, but yeah, I'm worth only that. But go ahead. But anyway. <laughs> I said the new project just to impress the <laughs> 27th. Yeah, that's cool. Birthday. IRS might be that. watching anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Keep me at 250 <laughs> all day long. <laughs> 250 all day long. So, so if I, so tax on 250 is maybe 50000 yeah, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So keep me right at that. But anyway, go ahead. Let's talk about this just to impress. Tell me about the new album, man. <laughs> just to impress. I, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it flustered now. It cost me more than two fifty to do the dress to impress out, man. But anyway, let's, now you got me like, man, I don't even know what to say no more. I'm mad as here. <laughs>
<laughs> Who we call to change that, dog? Let's put it up to about five million. That's fine. I'm cool on five million. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. The album comes out July twenty second. Do, do, do you even feel like you gotta do new music at this point? Nah, I do I do new music because I, I just wanna do it. You, you don't make no more money on records, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like it's just to stay relevant. It's right. just so people can hear that you still do what you do. And then, you know what I'm saying? That that good love I put out, boy, I like that, though. <laughs> you know, the yeah. new single. But you know what I'm saying? We ain't talk about that yet, but we was going to get to that. I know that. I'm do, I do radio, too. But anyway, yeah. anyway, you know what I'm saying? Nah, I don't feel like I have to do new music, man. I just do it because I just, if I'm, you know, it's therapy for me at this point. You know, I do it because I love to do it and because it. I've always enjoyed doing it. I just think at every every now and then I just should put something new out. And it's a gift to people too. Yeah, yeah, just that's right. I need people yeah, to go thanks. buy that record so I could go my my money could go up. <laughs> yeah, oh, you gotta get that two fifty <laughs> over two fifty. You know what I'm saying? I need my money to go up so buy a new record or a new single on you know a new album on my birthday. So man, give me a gift. There you, you know go. Know now, do you feel like you have to do radio being that you got sixty markets to you own? Like, do you have to walk in WBLS or any of these? Other stations, yeah, because you know I I, I do because you don't you know I mean you don't know when you no, don't have radio no more <laughs> so you know you know, you know, people don't want to say man when you had your syndicated show you would never come in right yeah. now you won't come in now you still gotta you know keep it keep it keep it at that level where you 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 still get the respect from the other the radio stations and you can't you can't lose control because you never know when it's not when it's not gonna be there there's a lot of people that had things and don't have them no more and now they begging people for for things and I don't you know I ain't trying to be begging y'all to come on y'all show you know later but on you know I'm for line. begging Keith you know? <laughs> yeah I am I, you just I, gotta say nobody to us and we'll let you come on up anytime okay <laughs> I'm gonna do that too I don't mind you know what I'm saying I have no problem doing that man for real well the OG has joined us the triple OG Keith Sweat it's I feel like we need way more time next time you come back up thank you thank you and I'm glad John and put me through the ring of like I be seeing y'all nah, put family, so many man. people you like, family, thank man. you I'm glad y'all like me man you know what I'm saying I don't want y'all to love me it's like y'all like, no, after, like, after we met like, you we was talking about you like yo that night Kiesla in Atlanta was a great night man absolutely ever, just not even what we anticipated no. No. thank you thank not you man. Gonna talk about all the people you told me you beat up and <laughs> man don't worry about it we good <laughs> we good and the R&B yeah. singers you pull guns on and stuff like that stop 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 we good we good my see they see they start stuff, y'all, y'all. I know it. You know, look, I'm looking around. <laughs> What's going on I up in this? Doing the Stevie piece. Wonder person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it, man. It's the Breakfast Club. It's Keith Keep Sweat. Swag. Yo, hey, hey, hey. the Breakfast Club every weekday morning. Tune in.